Cypress Way. And I believe you got uh, Hillary kind of looking towards that direction, Obama looking towards that direction, and uh, she wants to break the glass ceiling. She wants to. Can you imagine? I mean, Elizabeth Warren, we thought that Hillary Clinton was bad. I, if, if, if it could be any worse, uh, dare I say, I think Elizabeth Warren and these leanings would be just that. It would be worse. God, take cover, please. Armageddon's coming. Oh, my God. But you've got to thank God, really, for the turn of events that have happened uh, just so far, just right now with Donald Trump and for him and for that victory. I mean, this is the, the year of victory, 2017, the Super Bowl. I mean, everything just seems to be going our way. Everything seems to be going so well. It's just a beautiful thing. Um, there is going to be these hiccups. There's going to be, obviously, we knew that it wasn't going to be one of these I- items where Trump was going to come in. The Dems were just so eager to work with Donald Trump and with the Republican Congress. We knew this. This wasn't going to happen. Uh, you know, the Dems could say, well, listen, you didn't you didn't nominate a Supreme Court judge over Obama. Didn't even consider his lead. So we're going to get you back. We're going to get you back. But when you were a lame duck president, um, you know, you could understand where one side is coming from. And when you talk about one side for the other, there's side stand for something. It you you are the party of. Well, when it comes down to birth control and uh abortion and all these other different things, which there's no problem with birth control, but when you're a right to life for your pro life, and then you have, you know, a pro death party, because that's what the democratic party has been standing for. Let's face it. And you align yourself with, this is the subject matter. That's all you care about. You think about that. It's what Denise DeSoto, uh, the, the, uh, DeSosa, who is the filmmaker we've had on this, this broadcast a number of times has said that you are, affiliating with a nation of death, a party of death. And that's what you, you're subscribed to. And I, it, to me, it resonates a lot more. Are the Republicans perfect? No, but the ideals, the, the ideas, the thought processes seem to be a lot more logical and in line, at least in my world. And I understand it's not easy, and I've said this before, for women that have had to make the choice have, 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 are considering making and all these other things. But when you subscribe to death, that seems to be no way out, and that's that's your, your uh, mindset. You know, I'm sorry, but you've lost me. You lost me right there. Uh, and you lost my vote. It can't happen. But for whatever reason, people will vote just that one reason just because of that one thing and it's just one subject it comes down to and that's it they can't see anything else good in a candidate on the other side and that's a shame to me if a party represents my values um then i'm going to vote in a democrat if that was the case and they actually were better aligned better suited for the position again it shouldn't be what's left or you know right as far as party affiliations it should just be people doing the right thing and it seems like we live in a culture where common sense seems to be so devoid decency is so devoid uh it's a shame and now it's really refreshing to see a president actually working his butt off trying to to help things out there's a report out and because Donald Trump has promised that within 100 days in office that he's going to approve a very ambitious rebuilding restoration project with our highway systems that are deteriorating rapidly. Some of our nation's bridges, well, lots of them, thousands of them, tens of thousands of them are decaying. Uh, They have major, major issues. And there is a group that uh, is advertising and they're promoting urban renewal, says that President Trump should consider the list of America's worst highways and his $1 trillion infrastructure plan and erase them from the map altogether. And this, again, doesn't seem very logical. The group, uh, the Congress for New Urbanization, they want to pretty much erase highways through major cities because they believe that it's hurt back in the 60s and 70s, those, those areas that are no more. And now they just want to take all the highway systems out. Now, does that seem very reasonable to you? 60s and 70s? I mean, they've been gone for a long, long time. 
So the group's list, okay, here it is. The highways, six are interstate highways, which mean that they would be entitled to federal funding. Trump has promised $1 trillion in repairing the country's national infrastructure. So Interstate 375 cuts right through the heart of Detroit and has long cut off what surrounding neighborhoods from the downtown areas, what their complaint is. According to uh, their report for economic growth, and they want that to be uh, redone. Again, keep in mind that these roads were built mostly in the 60s and 70s that divided neighborhoods uh, and then destroyed destroyed them. That's basically what they said, and that's basically what they do when the federal government comes in to do highways. That's what happens, unfortunately. People actually have to move into other houses after their houses have been bought at what is deemed to be fair market value. It's never fair doesn't seem right, but they did this. And thank God for some of the highway systems through our country. But uh, now this group saying, you know, no, 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 don't do it. It's going to ruin our country. It's going to ruin our cities and all that. This is, I mean, again, this left liberal crap They're trying to tell us that we need to start back on horse and buggy. And, uh, Oh, yeah, this is San Francisco, uh, Miami, California, you name it. It's it's all over a country. They want to go ahead and do this. It's just, it's it's worse. Good luck trying to do that. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, it's a kind of a kooky idea. But, hey, I guess everybody has a voice. This is America. You can say what you want to do. Uh, I would say that it was probably a very tough thing. Back then, when they were having to do the uh, highway system, where they were making you know the routes from New York to Los Angeles, et cetera, et cetera, but but man, uh, for people to be able to get around the way they do and trucks and all that to have the distribution, they had to they had to be able to do this stuff. And it's unfortunate sometimes when people do lose their properties when when these things have to be done. And I've seen it in some city where. The downtown sprawling area where they do a double decker bridge and they call it an eyesore where then people are not as uh, inclined to actually pull over and do business or blocks businesses um, and in some cases actually causes crime. But um, what the, the major issue is that they're missing right now is the failing infrastructure, the infrastructure that needs to be addressed is bridges are in disrepair, disarray, and very fragile. And a lot of these bridges, uh, they could cave in. They could cause a problem. They've been doing patch jobs on some of them, but a lot of them just need complete overhauls where they need to pretty much just put some TNT on the bridge and just blow the thing up and be done with it. And there's a lot of our bridges were built back in the 50s, 40s. I mean, they're old bridges. And again, patch job here, patch jobs there is just uh, not doing the job. And I've traveled for every state in the U.S. but Alaska and Hawaii. And I've been over some pretty scary bridges. Um, kind of makes you wonder um, when you go under one or over one how safe they really are. And from the reports that have been done, they aren't very, very safe. Um, some of them, you know, are very quite dangerous and, uh, they need to be looked at. And finally, we got somebody that wants to do something about our infrastructure. And, uh, that's another way of actually making us great and providing more jobs for people that are in that industry and it'll help things out. So again, another great thing that's going to be approved here any day with the infrastructure bill that's going to come in and uh, the group saying, yeah, oh, we got to, we got to tear the highways out. We got to tear the infrastructures out of our downtown cities are going into our cities. Yeah, that makes most sense. So how do you suggest we actually, we uh, buy water. We just bring ferries in and close down the highways. You know, so, some people would probably like that. They don't like the interstate around them. I, I get it, but it's, it's, it, it's kind of here to stay. Um, all right, let's get into some serious news here. Three Chinese warships sailed near the contested uh, Sanku Islands today in a rare move, apparently sending a message to the U.S. Just, what, two days after President Trump's defense secretary visited Japan and vowed to defend the islands. And the ship sailed within Japan's territorial waters some 12 nautical miles off the island of the East China Sea, roughly 140 miles northeast of Taiwan, according to a U.S. defense official. 
on uh, Mattis's first overseas trip as Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, speaking in Tokyo, said China has shredded trust uh, of countries in the region by building up man-made islands in the South China Sea. He also said the U.S. commitment to protect Japanese territory applied to the islands in the East China Sea. This is very contested, and it's causing some major friction with the neighbors in this part of the world. I remember actually talking about this stuff in 15 and 16 with Chuck Harder, and he said this was going to be very contested, and this could get ugly. The people fighting over the Spratly Islands, and uh, these, these uh, well, Japan has claimed to the islands since the 19th century, by the way. Japan has. Since the uh, late 19th century, uh, China has claimed the islands since the end of World War II. And then following Mattis' pledge to defend, uh, the uh, Chinese foreign ministry spokesman Liu Kang said, We urge the U.S. to aid and take a responsible attitude, stop making wrong remarks to avoid making the issue more complicated to bringing instability to the region. Okay, so <clears throat> them bringing their warships in, three of them? Opposed to R1 that's actually there? Interesting. Remember, the ship sailed within Japan's territorial waters some 12 nautical miles off the island of the East China Sea, roughly 140 miles northeast of Taiwan. So you tell me who's being more provocative. I mean, this is just uh, flexgate, if you will, flexing their muscle, fake islands, and and then the the Spratly Islands. That's just unbelievable there. So it's going to be very interesting to see. But, you know, China's, they got a huge military. Uh, they have a big arsenal, and these warships are ab- absolutely gigantic, but again, bullying basically their neighbors and uh, the contested land. But Japan uh, clearly shows on the books that they have claimed the, the island since the 19th century, very early, since World War II. So who knows? But Jim Mattis there in the region talking about it, saying that we're going to defend our allies, and I think he definitely has a a very strong message. Don't you see how important it is to have a strong military, not a weak military, to have a military that actually is respected and people actually take uh, what is said and uh, they act accordingly, like Iran being put on watch. These are words that were never, ever uttered by the Obama administration. Instead, let's send them money. Let's not only send the Iranians money, but let's send the Palestinians money. Isn't that cute? And if Obama was there, he would probably be signing with China. Well, he didn't do anything. He just allowed them to build up and didn't do anything, didn't show any kind of force, didn't put any uh, restrictions on them, didn't slap any tariffs on them, didn't he? And these things might be coming to China. These things may happen. I wouldn't be shocked if Trump doesn't. And I've thought this through and I've listened to some military intelligence analysts to talk about talk about this very, very thing. There could be sanctions on them. When you do things that are not on the up and up and go against the world uh, governance, if you will, or the United Nations or NATO or anything like that, if, if, if you go against that and it's not the right thing, then you're going to be held accountable and sanctions for real that actually hurt them financially in the pocketbook. And it is amazing to see what happens when people are actually hit in the pocketbook. But like Ronald Reagan has always, well, he always said, and it's something that uh, he uttered more than just once in the White House, but in several speeches and regarding um, Russia, I think these should be strong words, not just for Russia in this day and age, but everywhere else around the planet is that we trust them, but we verify them. And man, they are smart words from a very smart man, Ronald Reagan. He knew what he was doing. It wasn't like, uh, what do they say, that President Bush looked into Vladimir Putin's eyes and saw his soul and that he was a good man. I don't know about a good man. I don't think good men take over Crimea and uh, do the things that Vladimir has done being a good man. But uh, I guess that was his interpretation. I guess we're all, well, we're entitled to have it. For the People continues right after this. Don't go anywhere. 